isn't that the things that dreams are made of? Probably not. Probably not to you, but that's kind of dreamland for me. Hi guys, it's Misty and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Misty and I am a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. But I also own an antique store in Bedford, Indiana called Wildflower Antiques. This video is my weekly what sold on eBay for the week of September 9th through the 15th. It was a great week. It was a steady week. And I mean, it wasn't like a record breaking sales week, but my sales were up 103.9% which is, I mean, that's pretty good in my book. I sold a total of 29 items on eBay. Now I do sell on Poshmark and Mercari, but eBay is, eBay's where, eBay is just, it's king. It's just king. That's just where I make my money. It's probably where I spend the majority of my time invested in, well, but for good reason. So these are my sales for the week. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with the seller hub in eBay. As you can see, my total sales, and now remember, this is gross sales, are $711.49. My sales were up 103.9%. Best day was Tuesday, and Tuesday used to be my best day per week, but sales are pretty steady all week long, so that's always great to see. It's interesting to see, too, what days do better than others. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing were these Dansko Valerie women's vegan blue canvas Mary Jane shoes. They were a size eight and a half, nine. The European size is a size 39. Uh, the, I picked these up at, I believe I got them at Goodwill for four fifty, and they sold for $38.25 and the buyer paid shipping. They were in great condition. I did clean them a little bit. I typically don't buy shoes that I have to put a lot of time in, but these were a little dirty on the bottom. And they, I mean, I I cleaned them up fairly well, but they, they were worn, they were used, but it's still a, a very sought after brand. This dance goes do very well for me. I do always like to put the sizing chart, and you can find the sizing chart just by, you know, doing a Google search, dance go sizing chart. I like to put a picture of this in the listing because it is a European size and I've had people that have said, well, I didn't realize that it wasn't this size. Well, I have the sizing chart right there. So I do like to put that in there. So Dansko shoes do very well. The next thing is the Stife Drummer Bear. I got this, guys, at an auction in a free box. Free! Someone did not want this Stife Bear. I know it's unreal to me, but um, I listed it and I did do free shipping on it. Uh, it it did sh it did ship priority, but it still wasn't very heavy. It cost me I think like eight dollars to ship it out, but it was free. Um, sold it for fifty eight dollars with free shipping. Uh, and the nice thing is, since this had the tags on it still, I you know I. I all the work was pretty much done for me. All I had to do with to check my comparable listings was enter in all of these words in a Google search, on an eBay search, and it came up. So, very happy with this sale. Okay, next item. Oh, these two items here. These were those Disney dolls. I picked up three of these in a lot bag at Goodwill for uh, $2.99. So I have the two boy dolls I sold. Now, typically the boy dolls do better than the female dolls. I don't know if they don't make as many of them. I don't know why that is. But this one in particular did very well because this was the caricature of Cameron Boyce, who has recently, unfortunately, passed away. I think that that did add the value a little bit to this doll. This was from Disney, The Descendants. So this was Carlos Deville, which I guess is like uh, Cruella Deville's son. I'm probably wrong, but it has something to do with along those lines. Um, but this is a very, this has a very big cult following behind it. This storyline and these dolls themselves. I had no idea who this doll was uh, when I bought the lot, but I knew that the boy dolls. I had the general knowledge that the boy dolls do wet better than the girl dolls. There was a girl in the slot. 
I still have her listed, but I had a viewer that sent me a message and told me who exactly this doll was. So thank you so much for leading me in the right direction and telling me who this character was. Uh, he was in all, actually all of these dolls were in pristine condition. I really don't think they were ever played with. I think that they were just taken out of the box and never touched again. So I sold it for $38.50, which was my full asking price and the, and the buyer paid shipping. The next one is also Disney Descendants. And honestly, you can see here, I didn't even use my white background. I just wanted to get these dolls listed. So I put it on my dining room table and I took pictures of them. Um, this one was Jay, um, Isle of the Lost. So this was from Descendants 2, and I think that this was the Jungle Book storyline. Uh, he was in excellent condition too. I had seen other comparable listings, and the hair was down, and so he was just in pristine condition. And he sold for $25.50, and the buyer paid $5.50 shipping. And again, with these um, just simple listings and pictures and off it goes. So I was super happy to get these dolls sold and off to their new homes. This next item is, I bought two of these at Goodwill for $2.99, I believe. I paid $2.99 a piece for them. They both sold to the same buyer. This was a Little Prince friendship puzzle. It was from 2015 from the Little Prince animated uh, movie. Um, it was made in Germany. It was brand new, sealed, which is typically the only way that I will buy games or puzzles is when they are sealed, unless they're vintage. But then I have to go through and count all the pieces, and that's very time-consuming. But when they're sealed, that's awesome. Sold them for $21.50. Sold them both, and I did combine shipping, so I just did just charge the buyer the $5.50 for shipping. This next item is an interesting thing because I had this in the shop for over two years. And I think I had $6 on it in my antique store for over two years. It is this George Briard enamel cookware stock pot in the Ambrosia pineapple. It's very mid-century. It was in excellent condition. Sold it for $32.50 and the buyer paid shipping. It was in great condition. It had a little spot, as you can see in this picture and click on that right in there where the enamel was chipped off a little bit but great condition great great stock pot very good mid-century vibe from this and again I put the measurements what it is and any any indication that there was any flaws on it and so this is just something and I've talked about this before uh, if you have an antique booth or an antique shop and you're you're also selling online it's just some some items just do better online than they will in your shop because of the demographic or the area that you live in. This is not a big thing that people in my area are actively coming in and looking for. So I snatched it up out of the shop and I put it online and it sold rather quickly. All right. This next item, well, I sold this guy twice. The first buyer never paid for it, and actually the second time I sold it, I sold it for more money, and they paid right away. Yay, yay. So this is just this little animated Jemmy Halloween black cat. This is a discontinued piece. They don't make this anymore. It worked. The eyes lit up. The mouth didn't move fully, and it was missing the battery compartment, and it still sold for $28.75. People like these things. I did list in there that um, that he is misting, he meows, and he hisses. His mouth no longer moves. He's missing the battery cover, but he works and sounds great. So I picked this up. I want to say I got this at the Goodwill outlet. Um, it was tangled up in a bunch of cords and hangers, and um, and I knew that these Jimmy things do. People do like them, and and with Halloween season coming up, I wanted to get it listed. So sold it twice. But the first buyer never paid, but I'm okay with the second buyer buying it for a higher cost and paying right away. This next item, I've started to go through all of the computer ink that I have. I pick it, I've picked it up at Goodwill here and there and everywhere when I can get it for 99 cents. This is something that I did pay 99 cents for at Goodwill. It is a Lexmark 105XL. It's a um, program ink cartridge for a... Uh, Lexmark copy machine or copier. 
sold for $21.50 and the buyer paid $5.50 shipping. Again, with Computer Ink, you need to make sure that it is a name brand. Its expiration dates do not typically matter. I'm not even sure. Yeah, there was no expiration date listed on this box. Uh, so, you know, it, it didn't matter in this instance. But I do, when I do ha sell Computer Ink, I do put the expiration date on them. Just so, you know, the buyer is aware that it is expired. But they still work. There's just an expiration date on them. All right, this next item are these two Hotel Lincoln International Silver Company Silver Soldered 4-Ounce Goblets. Um, I, this is something else that I had in the shop for a while, and I decided, well, I'm just going to see how it does online. You can see here it was Hotel Lincoln International Silver. It's this SL0867, which is the, the marking on it. It was a 4-ounce goblet. I don't know if these were for wine or what these were used for. They had a really nice patina on them. I didn't overly shine them or clean them or do anything in any in any way, shape, or form to change the patina on that. I'll leave that up to the buyer. Um, they, but they sold for $20.20 and the buyer paid shipping. Again, short and sweet listing. The next item is a Seattle Mariners jersey. This is a vintage true fan sportswear. It is Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, so this was a vintage jersey. Had this on Poshmark as well too. It had a lot of watchers, a lot of people um, liking it. On Poshmark, I would get offers for $8, $10, you know the typical Poshmark offers. But I sold it on eBay for $22.80 and the buyer paid shipping. There's the back of it there. It was a great jersey. Picked it up at Goodwill. It was under, it was under $5. This next item, I picked these up at the Goodwill outlet. Um, I was searching and searching and searching because this little family right here, this African-American family, there was a little girl that went with it too. So I searched the bins and searched the bins, could not find her. But I did find um, the Caucasian mother here and this little German girl. She didn't go with any of them, but I just went ahead and threw her into. She was really cool. Um, but I know that the African American dollhouse families are very hard. They're more rare. They're more desirable. And they're so cute. Look at the little boy in his little overalls. And he matches his dad's shirt. Ugh, love these. And, you know, they're made out of wire. And see how their legs had core. It was like thread wrapped around them. They were just adorable. And I these did not last very long either. Um, they sold for $22.50 and the buyer paid shipping. I think I, yeah. The African American mother, father, and boy, and a Caucasian mother and child. Alright, the next thing, this was something else that I got in a free box at an auction. And the it was these Disney, Walt Disney Production Monogram Mickey Mouse Christmas Ornaments. There's a lot of nine. You can see two of them here were the same. These Pluto ones were the same. They had a marking, and you're not going to be able to tell from these pictures. This is the back end of it. But they had a marking on the back. They were made by Monogram, probably in the 90s. These sold within a day. I When I looked up comps for these, because I, I kind of thought, oh, these aren't worth anything. And then I looked them up, and I thought, wow, okay, okay, they are worth something. Um, and I put them online. They sold within a day's time for my full asking price of $26.50, and the buyer did pay um, 454 first class shipping pretty cool so you know you see these at Goodwill a lot so don't pass these guys up um, if they've got marking on them uh, you know makers mark on them look them up and you might be surprised this next item is a the Nike T men's black short sleeve green camo dry fit shirt. This was a great size. It's a 2X. I typically don't pick up Nike anymore unless it's the bigger size. This one sold for $22.50 and the buyer paid shipping. It had this really neat camo um, graphic on it. All right, this next thing is something that my dad actually had picked up and it, the pictures are not doing this justice this was a really big ring it was from the world's tallest man on earth it was like a sideshow um freak show if you know i know that's not the proper terminology but 
um, you know, for my um, search listing, you know, people do collect. It's a, it's a term that they use to for things that they do collect. This was in pretty rough condition, um, and, and it sold for $25.50. It's not something that you would see a lot. It is a rarer piece. I know that there were different tallest man, men on earth, and I don't know. No, I didn't put the date on here. Um, at, at one period of time, Ted Evans was the world's tallest man. Um, it was in vintage condition. It, it, this ring was a, an inch wide, so it was, it was a pretty big ring. Uh, it was just a novelty piece, did ship first class, and, you know, the condition was, was rough. But I did tell the buyer that to make sure that they examine all photos. And all they have to do is zoom in, you know, and they can see. So, I mean, if I would ever see this again, absolutely I would buy it. The odds are of me finding it again, probably not very good. But good job, Dad. The next item uh, is a, another is a Nike. It's a 2X. I will pick items up if I can, you know, get them cheap enough in their bigger size. This sold within a couple hours of me listing it. Um, I did mark it a little bit lower because it did have a flaw. I didn't notice the flaw when I bought it. You can see right here it was in the neck along the seam. Um, and I did note, note that in the listing with the measurements. But it's just this windbreaker. Ones that were in... Um, that were, did not have the flaw were selling for like $26, $28. So I went ahead and marked mine lower because of the flaw. It could be totally be sewed. I just, I'm, I just, I don't buy things that I have to repair. This one got by me, but you know, this just goes to show you that still list things, even if you get them home and they have a flaw, make sure that you note the flaw. But I mean, I still, I paid under five, under 450 for this jacket and you know, I still made a profit on it. Oh, Mr. Grabbit, I have a lot of these old Tell a Tale children's books listed. Uh, Mr. Grabbit was a great one. He sold for $26. I did do free shipping. It shipped media mail. It was like $2.50 to ship. So when it's something like this that I can ship media mail, typically I will do, I will offer free shipping. This was a book from 1952. I love Whitman products. They Whitman will sell a lot of puzzles, books, games. There's the graphics on these guys are just amazing look at his little face eating his carrots and he just ate everything if he could grab it he ate it that was kind of the premise of the story but you know the corners did have some wear all of the pages were intact it's made by Whit Whitman Publishing Company in 1952 it's in Roman numerals but that's, a, that's an easy Google search to figure those out um, and in the listing there was no writing in the book no pages were torn it was in pristine condition and the, the book, the, the pages and book itself. Um, so, love this, sold it. Uh, I mean, this one did take a little while to sell, but I love selling these old vintage books. This was another item that I got in a free box, that same auction. We've done well at that auction with the amount of things that we've got for free. This was a little Thai Beanie Boo Halloween Grim Reaper. This one's retired. It was new with tags. It sold, I took a 20% off, I put it on 20% off sale. Sold for $19.99, free shipping. It, it shipped first class. I put it in, I wrapped it and put it in a poly mailer. Um, but these, you know, I, I, I really think that the time of year helped sell this because we're approaching the Halloween season. Um, but this is a retired one and you can't get them anymore. And if you, re if you collect these, it's one that you want. So it's retired and rare. All right. The next item, uh, I picked these up while we were on vacation. I think we paid 99 cents for all of the, uh, well, yeah, we paid 99 cents for the bag. There were other bits and pieces in there that I ended up just putting in my own drawer and keeping. This was a set of eight of these um, parfait, like iced teaspoons. Um, Rogers Cutlery, the, the pattern was called Whispering Leaves. And it did take me a little bit of time to figure out what the pattern was. Um, I did um, do a Google image search, which does help sometimes to find patterns. And I found it, sold for $19.40. I did offer free shipping on these. They did ship first class. This was my first experience with flatware, and I will buy it again if I can get it in, a, in an even set. 
This sold within an hour of me listing it. Um, I've listed several of these um, cross stitch kits. Uh, this one is Creative Accents Lighthouse Point Cross. Or Point. Lighthouse Point. Lighthouse Point is the name, but it's a cross stitch kit. And um, it was in nautical dimensions. Sold it for $21.50 and a buyer paid $3.50 shipping. These guys, if you can get these, pick them up. They... If you can get them cheap. I think I paid, I want to say $1.99 per kit. Uh, I picked them up at Goodwill. Only if they're new and in the package and still sealed. Um, but, I, you know, it says what everything is included, um, the number on it. So this, these are easy to look up comparables for because up here in the corner is the number of the pattern. And so you can just type in creative accents. The company, there, there's a bigger picture. It was made by Dimensions, I think down here, you can see, or somewhere down there, you can see it was made by Dimensions, but these are great. Great, pick these up. This next item is a Factory Effects Licensed Kawasaki Racing Men's T-Shirt. I typically will pick up these motocross or, you know, any kind of motorcycle related branding shirts typically do decent. Uh, I've had this one for a little while, though. It was in great condition. It's a size large, you can see there, uh, sold for $15.80, and the buyer paid $5.50 shipping. All right, this next item was also from the box of free things that I got at an auction, it was this little Hallmark keepsake ornament uh, from 2002. It was brand new in the box, sold it for $15.99, and the buyer paid $7.35 shipping. Yep, brand new in the box from 2002. Pretty cute little ornament, actually. Oh, there's the front of it. It has Donald on there. Very cute. All right, I sold two of these. Um, they were from my FabFitFun box, and then I think my mom gave me hers as well, and I sold it. But this is, uh, they are Tray Stick Mini Eye Essentials Neutral Set of Their Eyeliners basically eyebrow eyeliner um, pencils they came in my FabFitFun box that's the thing I love about my subscription subscription boxes that I do subscribe to is that I I find the things that I like and then I resell the rest and I make my money back so I can get things for myself and keep them and I can also sell them the, one of these sold for $16 with free shipping and then the other one sold, actually did they both sell for $16? I guess so yep they both sold for $16 with free shipping sold for actually within two weeks time this next item i'm still selling these butterbeer mugs uh, i picked these up for 69 cents at goodwill and they sell readily for about ten dollars a piece um, and the buyer did pay shipping on those i still have two left um and but so if you can get these cheap enough i mean people like these they collect these they use them they want more you can take these to um universal studios and get a refill and so you're paying you're paying less money on your butter beer and so I don't know I, I actually when we went to Universal Studios we each got one and I sold all of those and then I keep finding them at Goodwill and so I still pick them up they're not huge money makers but you know they make, make you a little bit of money add some traffic to your store okay this next thing I've had for a very long time and it has finally sold is this Athleta women's racerback tank top uh, sold for $18.20 and the buyer paid shipping. I'm not picking up Athleta anymore. It just doesn't move very fast for me. It's just not something that I'm, I'm actively picking up. Next thing is, I think I paid $0.99 cents for this at Goodwill. It's brand, no, actually, I think I got this at the bins. Yeah, I got this at the bins. It was, they were still wrapped in the plastic, brand new in the box. This vintage home interior, these little gold butterfly picks. So if you have a floral arrangement hanging on your wall, then you can just add these little butterflies to it to add a little accent to it. There were a set of five of them, and they sold for $12.50, and the buyer paid shipping. This next thing, I had a lot of these tins. We we went to an auction, and I actually have a lot more that I need to get listed. I just tried them. They're not selling for much. I don't even know that I'm even going to mess with it. But um, this was a Bergen Original Swedish tile, and the design was number 138. 
thanks so much, which that down here is thanks so much in German. This little saying down here. Sold for $5.99 and the buyer paid $5.50 shipping. Not gonna, you know, pick these up again, but I did have a bunch of them, and so I just, you know, just tried a few of them to see how they do. All right, another Jiffy Stitchery kit. This one was the Waterfall Birches. Got this one at the Goodwill Outlet. Um, brand new in the package, it had never been used. Sold it for $10.99 and the buyer paid shipping. Again, up in the corner here, you can't see it here because of the picture. There's a little number that tells you, it's this number right here. It tells you what number it is. So if you find these, it tells you the, the title here. You can see up there is the listing. This originally sold at JCPenney for $4.50 apparently. Um, but this is like the Cruel Kit. You can see here it has all. It's never been opened. It has all of the yarn and the um, the canvas to, to to put the yarn on. So I do pick these up. They do sell well. And the last item is this Guy Am Women's Mary Jane. These are yoga socks. I had a couple pairs of these, but these sold for. This was the last pair sold for eleven dollars and twenty cents. They were very lightweight. I just went ahead and listed free shipping and got them out of the door and those were my sales this week i was very very pleased with what i had sold this week i was very surprised with the disney dolls because i mean i picked them up at goodwill for 2.99 for the three of them so selling one of them for almost 40 dollars is i mean isn't that the things that dreams are made of Probably not. Probably not to you, but that's kind of dreamland for me. Anyway, uh, so those are the things that just make me want to keep doing this. Those things that are odd, they're just, 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 someone just tossed them away and they're, they're in, they're worth money. So anyway, let's go ahead and get back on track, shall we, Misty? Okay. On eBay. I sold a total of 29 items and my gross sales were $711.49. My sales were up 103.9%. Yes, that's great. Now, I mean, my sales last week were pretty crappy, but you know, I'll take that 103% increase in sales. Oh, hi, Mr. Fluffer Pants. Mr. Fluffer Pants wants to say hi. Not really, he's just walking through. Okay. So I, like I said, I also sell on Poshmark and Mercari and my Poshmark sales were, I mean, I, I'm still thinking that I might be breaking up with Poshmark very, very soon, but I, I'll, I'll probably wait till after fourth quarter. I only sold $47 and five cents on Poshmark, but here's the click. The, here's the thing. I sold seven items, seven items. You would think that my sales would be up more than $47. But people on Poshmark want a deal. So they don't want to pay you what you want for an item. They want to pay you, you have to at least offer them a pretty big discount. So I get really frustrated with Poshmark. Mercari, on the other hand, I mean, I only sold $54 worth of items on Mercari, but I sold three items, three items on Mercari, almost made as much as the seven items that I sold on Poshmark. I mean, I'm just saying. So, all together on all three platforms, my total sales were $809.39. I sold 39 items. 39, it couldn't have been 40. I don't like odd numbers. <laughs> this has this video for this week. I hope that you guys have a really, really good week. Keep listing, don't give up. Fourth quarter is coming. October will be here before we know it. Get your stores ready, 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 and get ready for the fourth quarter to begin and the sales to be rolling in because they're bound to come. That is this video. Again, I said that 15 times now, but I mean it this time. It's time to go, and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.